Gigafactory 3 is already under construction, a safety PSA for our UK and European friends, and the referral program has seen yet another update. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 462 for October 22nd, 2018. We start the week with a story from Twitter about Gigafactory 3. User at Vincent13031925 shares YouTube video of the land that Tesla recently purchased for the factory. Despite only closing the deal just days ago, Earthmovers reportedly have already started clearing land a week ago. The video shows a vast swath of land cleared for the factory that is slated to produce Model Y for the Chinese market, and likely all models eventually in production for delivery in and around China. While the video itself is useless to you if you don't speak Chinese, it gives multiple views of the property under construction. There's some terrible translation on the description if you care to try to decipher it, but good luck, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. What the whole shooting match does show is Tesla is certainly not messing around when it comes to its accelerated timeline for the factory. I still think it's highly unlikely they're ready within two years, but they're certainly showing that they're definitely on the ball, at least for the start of the project. We move over to the UK now, where I've got a bit of a Tesla Tibbets PSA for everyone, thanks to Electrek and a friend of the show. A rash of recent thefts has actually prompted Tesla to implement the pin-to-drive feature that was released not that long ago, and despite the new feature rollout, it seems they're still ongoing and mostly successful. Unfortunately, Electrek has video of a pair of thieves showing exactly how this is done, although not really in the most efficient manner ever, as the pair struggled to figure out how to unplug the car, despite being savvy enough to steal it with technology. The idea is pretty simple, although it does take two to make this happen, as one person needs to find the signal of a nearby key fob. Once this has been done, another attacker is near the car to replay this signal to the car, thereby unlocking it and allowing the car to be started. The thieves then disable remote access, and the car is stolen, likely to never be seen again. Friend of the show, Justin Cockett, has previously messaged me, telling of at least one story where the pin-to-drive feature mentioned at the top of the story has saved an owner's car from being purloined, but this isn't the only measure that can be taken. Justin forwarded me a document he'd made for distribution outlining other steps that can be taken. One way that can 100% prevent this issue is to simply turn off passive entry. This is the feature that automatically unlocks the car on your approach, but which also requires no interaction from the user to unlock the car. Disabling this feature requires affirmative presses on the key fob to unlock the car, which means that the thieves have nothing to replay unless they catch you actually pressing the key fob buttons. This, of course, is still possible, but not nearly as likely to be sure. Another method of prevention is a small Faraday bag that prevents radio signals from escaping. This would allow the use of passive entry still, but mostly defeats its purpose by inconveniencing the user having to actually remove the key fob from its pouch but it's an option if you wish to use it. In my opinion, if you're in an at-risk area or have some other reason to be worried that your car is at risk to be thieved, you should both disable passive entry and enable pin to drive. While it's decidedly less convenient, it is the most effective security. Disabling passive entry thwarts the most common methods thieves have of taking the car, and pin to drive can at least delay them even if they had the legitimate keys. It's ultimately up to you to decide what you're most comfortable with, but it's great to know all the options. Finally, our friends over at Teslarati have noted that the referral program has seen yet another change. While some of this is older news, other stories had recently pressed it to the back burner, and I'll get you up to speed if you hadn't already heard. There was a lot of attention near the end of Q3 where the last referral program ended in that unlimited free supercharging for the life of the vehicle was being put out to pasture as the benefit for the owners being referred and it was being replaced with only a $100 supercharging credit. This has changed yet again. Now referred owners will pick up six full months of free unlimited supercharging. In addition, as they've done in the past when changing these terms, any owners that were signed up during the $100 credit time frame will be granted the six-month benefit instead. It would seem that Tesla is still trying to find the sweet spot for referred owners, despite one of Elon's tweets that seemed ready to shut down the entire referral program a while back. One other very important thing to note is that the program was not available to Model 3 purchases at the beginning, and then was restricted only to performance model purchases after that. Now, all trim levels of all vehicles are eligible to be referred and to receive the benefits of referral and grant rewards to the referrer. Speaking of those rewards, the rewards in the program have now changed a bit as well. 
Previously, the first and second referrals were both for your choice of a signature edition high-powered wall charger or a kid's radio flyer Model S. Now, your first referral will allow you to send any image you like etched into glass into space. Hopefully, the aliens will like what you send. The second referral is the same as the old program, giving you your choice of the wall charger or the Model S radio flyer edition. The third referral gives you a choice of a set of arachnid wheels on the Model S, turbine wheels for the Model X, or a full week with the latest and greatest Model S or Model X. Referral 4 is also a change from the previous programs, as this now can enter you into a priority access program for vehicle updates. While this doesn't appear to be the famed early access beta test program, as it's not framed that way, it's certainly possible. At minimum, it would seem that these owners will be added to the first batch of public updates going out. And last, but certainly not least in the standard referral level, is an invite to a future unveiling event, the next of which would appear to be Model Y. This is just the entry to the event, though. You've still got to get your own accommodations and airfare. There are, of course, all the secret levels as well, which remain unchanged, including the not-so-secret benefit of knocking 2% off a new next-gen roadster for every referral made after the fifth one. So, here's my usual shameless plug regarding the referral program. If you enjoy the show and have gotten some benefit from it, and you happen to be buying a Tesla, please consider using the show referral code, which is ts.la slash jim50888. It costs you nothing, gives you a great benefit, and could potentially land me some nice swag. If we ever get to that five referral level, it could also net me an invite to events, which would be totally amazing to be able to be covering for you all. Make sure you check out the links to the full stories in the show description. There are many ways to support the show, and if you're not in the market for a Tesla, please consider supporting the show financially through Patreon at patreon.com slash teslatidbits. Thanks to our super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Mark and Sarah Thomas, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Bruno Kundici, Joey Boots, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymer Brown, Megawatt Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Robert Healy, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Blake Thompson, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Michael Pastroni, and Travis and Cheyenne Rush. Of course, if you can't support with dollars, that's quite all right. Feel free to leave a positive review, subscribe, or like the show on your platform of choice instead. If you have feedback for me, as always, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. I'll see everyone back here again on Wednesday. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.